uh, I think the environmental movement has gone too far. It's gone too far in the sense that uh, the if, if, that 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 in its extreme you you start viewing humans as a blight yeah, yeah. on this, the yeah, face that, of the earth. That turns and, out to be a real problem. Yeah, mostly implicitly, but sometimes explicitly. Um, and if, if, if you internalize that, then you start thinking why- well, AI systems, for example. Yeah, I'm somewhat worried that the, the AI systems would be, I mean, uh, you could say like various ways that AI could go bad would, would Train be, one on Paul Ehrlich's work and see what happens. That would be hell. Yeah, yeah. Well, hell. we have plenty of political systems that have already exactly done that. Yeah, yeah. No, that would be that would, that would be, be hell. That would That's be hell. exactly right. That would be hell. Um, what happens when the environmental movement goes too far? In this thought-provoking video, Jordan Peterson and Elon Musk explore how environmentalism can lead to a misguided ethos that prioritizes nature over humanity, often driven by fear and a desire for control. Musk points out that environmentalism, when taken to the extreme, can start to view humanity as a burden, which is fundamentally flawed. He emphasizes that this mindset is not only incorrect, but dangerous, as it can lead to policies that harm human progress and well-being. This discussion offers a thought-provoking perspective on the intersection of environmentalism, human innovation, and technological progress, challenging viewers to rethink the narratives around sustainability and human impact on the planet. So, so but, but just going back to the, you know, how, how can something which is, I think generally, it sort of starts out with good intentions, but ultimately sort of um, pa pa pave the road to hell is, is environmentalism in the extreme. Yeah. Um, that starts to view humans as bad, uh, humans as a, a, a load on the earth that the earth can't sustain. This is, these are completely false. Um, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's interesting that the economists and the biologists tend to separate into se separ segregated camps on that front because the biologists tend to be Malthusian. And that makes them really bad biologists. Yeah. So there, I think it was, I can never remember the philosopher who said this, but it's a brilliant observation, is that we evolved thought so that our thoughts could die instead of us. And that's actually, this. it's great. It's a great line. And it, it's actually the case because... The prefrontal cortex evolved so that we could produce disposable avatars, right? So I, in our conversation, what I'm really doing in our conversation is I'm offering you a potential avatar of myself for the future. And I'm okay. saying, why don't you see if you can kill this thing now so I don't have to act it out and die? Okay. And that's part of the, right, exactly. And so, and we're, we've extended that with games, for example, right? Sure. We've externalized that. And so the reason the biologists are wrong is because they don't actually understand the qualitative difference between human beings and other creatures, is that we can let our thoughts die instead of us. We sub, so that's substitutionary death. That's a good way of thinking about it, right? And that means that the Malthusian limits, they don't apply to us in the same way. And so the economists got that right. It's like, we can innovate our way out of scarcity. In fact, I don't like the idea of natural Absolutely. resource, for example. I think that's a Marxist notion, natural resource. It's like air, okay, I'll give you air. Everything else, fresh water, that is not a natural resource. And kerosene or sure. fossil fuel just laid in the ground until like 1850 because nobody could figure out what the hell to do with it. So, so what that implies is that it's something, I think it's a religious ethos that's the natural resource. The religious ethos that allows us to orient to the future, to be community oriented and to, and to be trustworthy. Yeah, well, look, I mean, at least some of these things, one can actually apply physics or, you know, one can analyze in a scientific way to say, is how many humans can Earth sustain without what, what most people will consider to be significant environmental damage? And I think if you actually do the numbers, um, I think it's potentially 10 times the population we have today. Right. Um, so, so how did you arrive? How did you arrive at that figure? I mean, obviously, you've put a fair bit of thought into this, and this is a very countercultural proposition. Since the mid 1960s, the moral proclamation has been that there are too many people on the planet, and that is, I think, Paul Ehrlich was the ultimate what exponent of that particular. Yeah, his, his analysis was very unscientific. He based it on some visit to Delhi, I believe. Right. Yeah. Right, and sort of visceral repugnance. Yeah, wrapped himself in science and, and produced nonsense. Um, so, 
I mean, you, you just say like, okay, well, how much land area do we need to grow food? Yeah. Um, how much would that encroach on natural habitats? What's the actual food growing potential given? Um, Especially if we got good at it. Right, and we are actually quite good at it. Yeah, getting right, better. right, right. Um, and um, uh, is there enough water? Well, actually, there's, there's plenty of water because Earth is mostly water. It's 70% water by... Mm, that's convenient. By surface area, yeah. Um, desalination is actually ex very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's really not a, not a shortage of water. There's, there's not a shortage of, um, of, of sort of surface area and, mm -hmm. and energy to, to, build, to, to um, grow food. Um, and, there's uh, no shortage of computational time. And increasingly, there's no shortage, right? And that's energy dependent to some degree. Yeah. But the energy problem is solvable. Very solvable. Yeah. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content.